speaking of uh, edgy, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. speaking of edgy, we had some edgy news come out. I don't know if I'm using the adjective in anywhere even remotely right, <laughs> but at this point, whatever. <laughs> uh, is is We're, edgy? We've gone too far. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Boeing's commander for their first crewed mission of the Starliner. So you guys, we've talked about you know Starliner a hundred times. It's basically uh, there's two vehicles that are going to be sending humans to the International Space Station for NASA for the commercial crew program. That's of course SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsule, and there's Boeing's Starliner, which has only done one uncrewed flight test that went poorly. They have to redo that. They're doing that as as of we know early January now of 2021. And then hopefully about six months after that, they will fly humans. And the crew was already picked out in like 2018. So we already, you know, we've known who's going to be flying forever. And the actual, uh, the commander, you know, the person in charge of this mission was, uh, was Chris Ferguson, who was more than a commander. He's been an integral part of Starliner. He is the director of mission integration and operations at Boeing. So he's been like Mr. Starliner is stepping down from that first flight. Now, hmm. I don't want to read too much into it because I don't honestly think it has anything to do with like him not, you know, thinking that the vehicle's safe. I think it's purely that he wasn't expecting this to go into 2021. Um, and mm -hmm. I think 2021 has some big family events. It might be like a graduation. It doesn't, um, it doesn't say what exactly he doesn't state, but basically um, I'm trying to find the quote here. He, he says something along the lines of um, uh, da, 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 where is it? Uh, but basically like he he's, he's stepping down because uh, for family, for personal reasons. And he just can't go to space in 2021. Um, and that's understandable because, you know, when you, when you do an international space station mission, you might be there for two to six months. Mm -hmm. And so imagine trying, especially with a timeline like this, the stress of saying, you know, I'm going to set aside two to six months of my life. And that's just for the flight, the actual, you know, prepping for the mission still takes, you know, the actual mission will take several months before that. So if they're looking at potentially July, you know, you're you're saying to your family, basically, like, I can't do anything from March till September, October, November. So if you have a big personal thing, you know, like a, a kid graduating or something along those lines, uh, which it sounds, you yeah. know, I, I, again, I don't what know could exactly it be? what. I don't know. Like, he just said family commitments. Because as an astronaut, I feel like you, like you're, like if they said, hey, actually, we're going to Mars instead, I'm sure he'd be like, yep, I'm, I'm in, right? Yeah, um, I think so. But hold on, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna try to find the actual quote because um, it's it's a good quote and I think it explains it better than I'm <laughs> explaining it. Um, uh, okay, so he okay, Ferguson said he decided to step down from the mission because of family obligations. It was a decision that was not made lightly. It surrounds what has really amounted to a year that that uh, is replete with family obligations that I just do not want to risk missing. So it could be, you know, a daughter's wedding. Like, what if there's multiple things that are like on the table for an individual that you and, you know, he I'm, I'm sure that, he, you know, everyone was expecting this to happen in this flight to happen in 2020. Um, so all of a sudden it starts slipping into new obligations, new, you know, things. I, I understand. I get how rescheduling around space flight is the biggest nightmare in the world because it's so stressfully fluid. You're, it's an, it's a milestone based thing that you're trying to schedule around and that just doesn't work well with real life, like with a normal life. Yeah. Um, I, I joke sometimes that I have had, it's like karma biting me in the butt because I used to uh, shoot weddings, you know, do wedding photography where you're booking out a weekend, like a year or two in advance, you know, I can't do anything on this weekend. So if anything cool pops up, I'm screwed, you know, and now I'm getting like karma in the a bit in the butt because now it's the opposite. It's like <laughs> I don't, I can't schedule four days from now because there might be a, yeah. a launch. You know, I literally can't schedule for tomorrow sometimes because I don't know if an event's going to happen. Like I, my f schedule life now, my personal life is absolutely thrown. You know, noodles to the toilet is as they say. <laughs> well, they Obviously, all say that. They, <laughs> everyone says that. So um, <laughs> <Praise> <laughs> <Zoe>. <laughs> I went down in t-shirt now. 
Uh, but so I, 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 I think if I'm reading into this at all correctly, which I haven't, on, I have to admit, like I haven't really heard too much more from it. It's mostly just a NASA press event or a press statement. And then that's pretty much it. Um, but uh, it, it sounds like it's it's purely for personal reasons. I don't think it has anything to do with professional. You know, I don't think I, we need to read into this as any kind of conspiracy theory of Bowen. Well, not people making are going a, to. Oh, yeah. No, oh, I've already seen it. <laughs> but he will be yeah. replaced by Butch uh, Wilmore, Barry Butch Wilmore, who uh, has been the backup as the commander position this whole time. So he's basically been there along every portion of the training anyway and that's how nasa does this stuff you know you have a backup to every position in the mission so that if anyone you know gets sick or all of a sudden you know or breaks a leg or does something and needs to yeah. back out of the mission they can literally just boop just like apollo 13 we saw uh who was that jack swagger uh, yeah swagger get uh re replaced uh or or yeah or he replaced yeah, one of I can't remember. Wasn't that Tom um, Hanks? I thought that was Tom Hanks. <laughs> no, Tom Hanks that was, was uh, Gary Lovell. Sinise, wasn't it? Yeah, Gary Sinise oh. played. Uh, did Gary Sinise play Swagger or did J Gary Sinise no, uh, play? Kevin Bacon played Swagger. Yes, there we go. He's so, the one that got thrown in there. Yes, and and Sinise got backed out, and that was he was playing because um, they thought he had the measles. Jim uh. Jim Lovell. Jim. No, no, that's the commander. That was Tom. Hanks. That was Tom Hanks. Fred yeah. Heiss. Bill Paxton. Hayes. Hayes. Um Paul Paul this is embarrassing. Uh Paul says Ken. Ken Ken, Ken, Mattingly? Ken Mattingly? Ken Mattingly. Yes, yes, yes. There we go. Mattingly. There you go. Now you have it. Now we know See, what we're talking about. See? I can remember that, but I'll go downstairs and forget why I went downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's yeah. No, Texas Heat's getting to you. Yeah, so, so mission years has still on. To me. Mission still a go in terms of all the things, or is yeah. there like because yeah. of the change? Do they have to change? You know, is there any change to the mission now or anything? There really shouldn't be. This is just pretty much an open and shut. You know, like they're going up, they're testing the vehicle all the way through, basically doing what what demo two was for SpaceX. You know, where you launch, you go up, you dock with the International Space Station. In between, you do some manual flight controls, make sure everything works okay. You know, you just confirm that all the systems that are supposed to be controlled by humans are controlled, controllable by humans, basically. Uh, all the backups and all that stuff work. Uh, doc, hang out there for a bit, do whatever they need to do, and then come back home. And uh, that's, you know, like I said, that's scheduled uh, tentatively for about six months after uh, OFT2, Orbital Flight Test 2. And this will be CFT1, Crew Flight Test 1. So, And to, to re... Uh refresh my memory here they did this once and it failed in terms of the thing went haywire it right that's this without one that we're talking crew for oft without, without a crew yeah yeah yep. but they so now they had to come back and kind of retool some things and figure that out right yep. and then that'll they be had, the next un, they had unmanned two, test you know two issues that were that were basically software derived issues uh that were making it so uh you know one of them was the mission clock inside the starliner capsule was off from the rocket uh, they were in, I think, just simply different time zones is what it ended up being. <laughs> so by the time the, the capsule separated from the booster, it thought it was an hour into the mission. So it's and like, hey, hour. now I need to go this way. <laughs> it's like, no, no, Literally, no, you don't. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> it, so it was thinking like, oh, I'm I'm coming up on rendezvous point number two, you know, whatever, and like firing thrusters for that. And it's not at all uh, what it was supposed to be. Um, yeah. The uh, the other thing that happened was right when so basically they found out that, that Boeing was just testing segments of the mission and they were not capable of testing the entire mission. They were doing like, here's this section of mission. We'll test that. Here's this section of mission. We'll test that in this section. And then so what happened is right before reentry, there's another section that got overlooked because all of a sudden when they jettisoned the trunk, the trunk has its own. Uh, there's like a service module that had uh, the abort motors the solar panels and the radiators that needs to re be removed from the capsule. So it exposes the heat shield. So they jettison that trunk. The trunk still has its own thrusters and is required to actually maneuver away from the capsule. So it doesn't, you know, come back and hit it during reentry or anything. Come to find out when it, it was about if, if they hadn't fixed it two hours before they had jettisoned the trunk, uh, it would have still been controlling as if it were attached to the capsule. Oh, so no. its point of control would have been completely off and it likely mm -hmm. would have just ran right back into the into the <sighs> capsule. 
which would have been likely catastrophic or at least at bare minimum, just very not good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so they've got to do this again and not have any of those things happen. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, and now this is going up on an Atlas five or something. Yeah. Good job, this, Ben. This isn't the, cause like, I always get confused cause this is called Starliner, right? And SLS is a sep is the rocket that will actually launch Starliner. Is that right? No. No. Oh, SLS okay. will That's launch totally separate. Orion. Yep. Those are completely uh. different vehicles okay so starliner is like a capsule is what we're talking about here yes starliner is just a it. spacecraft capsule yeah. yep sls unless i'm wrong is strictly for moon stuff right i mean correct yep it has no that's the idea current plans or anything for anything any low earth orbit activities it's it's yeah. strictly well, what is what does sls stand for again space launch system oh i thought it was starliner launch system that's what i thought oh yeah no no, no. Ah. space launch system yeah see all, so, all the names they're they're they really need to work on like they're very separate. similar because <laughs> everything star is like star hop you know it's all like i don't know remember yeah. when every phone was named something one htc one <laughs> blah 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 one yeah everything in the world was like something one and you're like yeah. ah and then it was like one s one max <laughs> and you're like oh my god yeah. like plus yeah yeah. Well, and the the space shuttle was officially the space transport system, right? Yep. Transportation STS. system. Yep. Yep. Hmm. Yep. That's why you heard so the mission SLS, name. So SLS space launch system. Previously, and STS space transport system. Exactly. <laughs> right. Because those are different things. Right. Um, speaking. <laughs> well, one of them of... launches and one of them transports. Ben. <laughs> yeah, clearly. But, uh, but can you transport without launching? It's like a rectangle in a square. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash YT. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks everyone for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.